Eagles. And welcome. 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 We're going to officially call the meeting to order. Waxaki Amateur places. Radio Club, April 4th, 2024, so let's club start meeting. This table. If you have a call sign, it's a name, call sign, and where you're from. Start right over here with you, Keith. Uh, Keith, N A K R N, on the Higgins Lake. And Gary, W4GAD, um, just up the road up here. Jim, KC8 NNX, uh, Rose Lake Forest, and Brownstown. Tom, WB8, WIV, Cadillac. Neil, W8NPC, and Reed City. I'm Chaz, KE8, LFT. I'm from Lake City. Okay. Uh, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, W8JAS, uh, from Man. Oh, my name's Bob. I live in Cadillac, and I don't have my license yet. My tech license, I'm working on. Um, Greg, Rich. Uh, Rich. K G A U M S Cadillac. Les K E L E S Cadillac. Steve W A S J S Cadillac. John W V A I. This is the first day, so you must eat it. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Go. N A P M F Lake City. Uh, Tim K J A Charlie Cadillac. Scott A D A J V Don Scott. Gordon WACT, Lake City. Tim, NAPDA Cadillac. Jeff, NAJAP, and beautiful Cadillac. <laughs> KDAMIR man. Ron. Ron. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm calling it. I got a question for him. Go uh, Lee, ADA, UVN, Cadillac. Brandy, KCA, TXS, Cadillac. Van, WA, LKV, Tuscan. And I belong to Leah. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm Lynn W A U P V, but I would like these two gentlemen to stand up. Yeah. Look at these colors. Stand up and show off the yeah. shirts, guys. Yeah. Put yeah. a little yeah. away. Yeah. All right. All right. There's four stars. Yeah. Give them all a salute. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Or if you join Mars, you too can spend fifty-five dollars on the shirts. <laughs> <laughs> or you don't have to join Mars. You can go to Walmart, get this shirt for eleven dollars, and take it to Creative Embroidery and for five dollars. Get your name on it. Yeah, but you don't get that. Yeah, you don't get that. All right. Well, let's get started. We got a lot to cover uh, tonight. We'll start with the reading of the minutes. Brandy, you're up. Part of the average bear. Grant request was approved for the community building. And there will be meetings with the partner programs like us to allow for recommendations on design. Spring Fling is next Tuesday, April 9th. Please sign up. Uh, there was a conflict with school and the Mac Trail Gym for setup. So on Friday, May 3rd, the swap start time will be 5 p.m. instead of 4. Uh, Lynn was looking for a code practice oscillator. And I got one. <laughs> Thank Todd, you. Oh. Uh, due to health concerns, Tom at KDA EOA was stepping down as newsletter editor, but Gordy and Cheryl were stepping up and taking over. Thank you. Uh, Van noted that there's going to be a bus trip to Dayton this year that will originate in Ann Arbor, and they are looking for operators during the eclipse on Monday to uh, so that we can check propagation. They get you. Uh, there was a Thank crossband you. test, uh, Mars crossband test coming up, uh, and we talked about the club survey results. We would like to do an open house at our June meeting. Uh, Lynn brought some um, cool pictures from past, past activities, and we did need to make a decision on next month's meeting, or July's meeting. Uh, we did a cool presentation on meter bounce uh, uh, contacts, and it was noted that the repeater is still using the old controller as the new one was not intuitive. Meeting adjourned at 7.27 p.m. Any corrections or additions to those excellent minutes? Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second. Third. <laughs> Third, fourth, and fifth. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. I think it passed. All right. Lee, you're up. And there's a seat right up here, right up this table. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. You want to open yeah. first? This one first? 
All right, you have two for the um, for the financials. You have the, this one here, the summary, and then you have a detailed one. So I don't show. I'll show the. I'll go over the detailed one if you have any questions. Um, there. there we go. Okay. Okay, for the uh, the swap so far this for this month we've brought in some last month too, uh, 192 dollars. The next month I'll have a total for the you know that we've brought in so far, um, and then 20 dollars for the 50/50, a total income of 212 dollars. Um, utilities 23 dollars and 26 cents. For expenses the swap was 445 dollars. Now that went that went to caps. Um, and then this miscellaneous here, thirty-five dollars. That went to the town, town of uh, the village of Marion for a picnic. So those two add up to five hundred and twenty-two dollars. And we didn't pay either of those until May of last year. So, so that's something that we won't have to pay in the, in the future here. Uh, so the total expenses was five hundred three dollars and twenty-six cents. We had a beginning balance of. $3,312.76 with income of four sixty one dollars expenses, oh, that's not right. <laughs> but anyway, the ending balance is $3,021.50. The expenses was $212. I mean, pardon me, the expenses was $503.26. I copy these from one month to the next. <laughs> they screwed up. Any questions? <laughs> one ticket for one buck. That's my story. Or as many as you want. <laughs> Motion to approve the uh, financials. Motion. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you, Lee. I think you've got one of my pieces of paper. Yeah, the, the mouse was moving. The mouse. You blame it on the mouse yeah. every time. <laughs> All right. Let's get rid of this. <laughs> Okay, a couple of things that I need to report on that are just very simple. First of all, uh, this will happen about a week ago. Two different uh, hams were passing through. And since Bob, our uh, hospitality chairman, wasn't there, I was able to assist him and I talked with him. And both of them remarked how much they appreciate the fact that when they drive through Cadillac, they always get a response. So that's just an encouragement. Amen. If you hear somebody, you know, get back to them. Not many repeaters do that. It's one of my personal pet peeves. So yes, sir. thanks for all the good work you do. All right. Spring Flame. If you haven't signed up, here's the sign up sheet. Maybe during the break you can sign up. We've got about 20 that are going to be there. That's about Lakeside Charlie's. Tuesday. Starts at Tuesday. 6 o'clock. Tuesday. That's to accommodate. The few working stiffs we still have here. <laughs> uh, May meeting, Skywarn training. We're going to have our regular meeting at 6:30. Do a quick <coughs> business meeting, and we may have some guests. I have no idea how many. That's fine. The uh, the uh, National Weather Service out of Gaylord is inviting, I think, people from three counties. Oh, wow, nice. So we may have to go upstairs and do church or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. But. Uh, Show up for the training. Wings and Wheels, they set a date, August 24, right? Correct. It's going to be bigger and better? Bigger and better. All right. If you didn't work at it last year, you missed something. Oh, it was fun. It was a blast, wasn't yeah, it? Was. And you know what's kind of good to be next to cams? I think we were the most popular corner because kids put it up, airplanes, and be able to talk on a radio. We really had a good time. Uh, Keith? always comes up with ideas and he's come up with an idea that I don't know that we can do it this year but I'd like to put it in your brains to think about it and brainstorm and that is an airport day camp with a ham radio emphasis. Oh, that's cool. And possibly, I mean there are a lot of ways we can go, you know some clubs do a, a ham in a day thing, we can do a ham in a week, get a bunch of kids, get their technician. Uh, a lot of thinking needs to go into it but what a great way to get kids involved in ham radio. So. If you have any ideas, more important, if you want to be the principal, the head teacher, 
let me know. Yes? Lowell Amateur Radio Club in high school does that a couple times a year. And if anybody knows anybody down there, they would be a good resource about how they pull that off. Great idea. It's a great high school club, too, by the yeah. way. Thanks. So I thought that's already volunteering. It, 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 it did. He did. Yeah. He volunteered. He's going to have He's going to have <laughs> volunteer me when I'm not here. Okay. <laughs> Don't come next month, okay? Uh, now, uh, Van, could you come up here for a second, please? Uh oh. You're in trouble. Leah, could you join him up here, please? What'd you do now, huh? These dear people, ever since I've been coming to these meetings, which has been nine years now, they've always brought the most important thing, which is the cookies and the coffee. <laughs> and we want to honor them. Now, they are not going to be able to attend the uh, uh, spring fling, but. Uh, we want to give you a gift certificate so that maybe you could take your wife on a date to Lakeside Charlie's. Aww. And you know, it just might be good for your marriage. <laughs> How long have you been married? Oh, 75 and three quarters years. <laughs> Far be it from me to give you any advice in that department. But He's got me by thank you so percent. much. Let's give him a hand. My saying, my saying when asked about the secret of that long was we were committed to each other no matter how much we fought and besides there's no other woman I'd rather fight with. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So that's why you look so beat up. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't hear that. <laughs> uh, do we have anything for open mic? We always like to give everybody a chance. Gordy. Uh, we do have the cross band coming up May 11th. If anybody's interested, I'll bring in more flyers to the next meeting and hand them out. Uh, you can go anywhere online uh, for Air Force Mars and type Air Force or Mars cross band and all the frequencies and everything are there. Uh, if anybody needs any information, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I'll, I'll send it all to you. And of course, I always plug for Mars members. Thanks. I guess the club and Gordy, are we doing testing May 4th? Yes. Oh, did you? I was not aware. Do you want help? Yeah. Okay. I was uh, counting on you. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, testing is at 10.30. 10. 10. 10. Oh, all right. Okay, 10 o'clock. So that gives us time to do this. Do a little bit of walk around Good. the shop. All right. Come a little bit early and do paperwork, because paperwork's always a chase. All right. All right. You know, so come in and do the paperwork. Sure, we'll be there to do the right. paperwork. All right. And yeah. I, I want to test at 10 o'clock. Right. 10, 10. It kind of depends on how many people show up. Okay, so V We go until everybody's registered and then we start testing. So. How many VEs can you use? Well, we need five minimum, in my opinion. Okay. How many VEs are here? Lee. Lee. Doc. I will try Scott, to get in there. Steve. Myself. My wife, Cheryl, does paperwork, so... I'll try to get in there. I'm, I'm doing. Dan will table. probably be there, won't he? Yeah, Dan Carlson will come. Okay. Good. Hope we get a good turnout. Well, and it's not just checking the test. It's it's bird dogging people. That mm -hmm. that whole proctoring and. Yep. Right. So. Okay. The club activities. We pretty much know what they are. Oh, one sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was stuck on a radio on two meters. Uh, some gentleman and I can't remember the call sign and Lynn Lynn failed me. He, he, he doesn't have it either, and Bob doesn't even remember the conversation, so he's even worse. But anyway, it, the gentleman had a model airplane that he wanted to donate to the model airplane club here in town. And I, for the life of me, I can't find a piece of paper where I wrote it down, and I don't remember his name. So if you're here tonight, or, or you happen to hear somebody mention it, I'm the person he needs to talk to. Okay. I won't lose it a second time. And the rumors are true. I have gone over to the dark side. I am making a model airplane that an eight-year-old could make in an oh, afternoon. Good for it's you. probably going to take me about six months, but <laughs> I'm making progress. I'm not good working with my hands, and uh, Les can attest to that because he was so patient. He didn't make fun of me. Uh, I glued two pieces of balsa wood together in an hour and a half. <laughs> Excellent. 
<laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> he didn't glue his fingers together. <laughs> let's do net controls. And I think we're going to, let's try to do April 1st. And I'd like to really spread it around. If you've never done it, step up to the plate. It's not that hard. Uh, who wants to do April 11th? Awkward silence. I'm a gateway station that day from Mars, so it's hard for me to... Ah, put me on April 11th. I think I'll be there. Tom. Yep. April 18th. Unless you're trying to act like nobody's going to pick on you. Well, I can do well, it. You, I've done it before. You said that. Well, somebody. no, we want, we want, we got to keep repeating. You want to do the 18th? Yeah, I can do the 18th. Um, Who wants to do the 25th? Gordy, thank you. <laughs> Let's try to get May lined up so we don't have to worry about it. May 9th. Who wants to do that? I can do May 9th. No, yeah, I can do May 9th. Okay, Steve. I'll do the 16th. 23? I haven't heard from you, Brandy. I tried to do mine in the winter time, but okay. I can I can probably do the uh, 23rd. Okay. One more. We have one more for the 30th. I'll take another one. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Now the new business. Let's see if I can find this here. We need to make sure that we're all ready for this swap that we're going to pull off. And we're pretty close, so I can get out of the words. I'm just going to go through this checklist. Can you all see it? Yes, sir. All right, big question. There's been some discussion that do we really want to give away another two meter transceiver that everybody's going to dual banners and C4 FM and everything else? Or do we want to give a gift certificate? One thing to note, we usually give that two meter transceiver, it's a Yesu something something for 150 bucks. They're up now to 179. What are your thoughts? Oh, okay. Some people say a gift certificate, even if it's $150, doesn't feel like a piece of equipment. Others say most guys have got three or four two meter transceivers. Is that all? <laughs> How many do you have? You don't want to know. Okay. What <laughs> do for me? Yeah. <laughs> Steve. Let's let's just say the number is more than ten. Okay, Steve. Are we just buying this and then? We buy this and it's the grand prize with the drawing. Tom handles it. Yeah, my, myself, I I'd be thrilled with a hundred dollar gift certificate. You think I could spend it on whatever I wanted? Take it to the radio. Uh, let me just have a an informal show of hands. Hundred fifty dollar gift certificate or. Uh, $179 two meter transceiver or anything else. Gift certificate, hands up. Uh, two, like gigaparts. Or gigaparts, DX engineering. I'll take, I'll take How about, yeah, well. the, okay, it's unanimous. We will do a gift certificate. It'll be $150 and I think, you know, for most of us, we've got enough two meter transceivers. Nah. There might be something, <laughs> except for Jeff, <laughs> but there might be something you want to pick up, so. Jeff is still trying to buy cars to put radios in. Yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me back up more here. I have a question. The omnibus net, it's 146.98. Our repeater is 146.98. Yes. And it's minus 0. 0.6. Yes. And no tone. Yep. No tone. Just for the new people. Right. Good. Yeah. No tone. Uh, I sent an email flyer, uh, flyer to all the Michigan clubs. I've got good response on that. Press release to area media. Anybody want to do it? not I'll do it I heard you say you'll do it I did it <laughs> uh, okay we're gonna have to have one club table uh, and that's gonna be more <laughs> prizes and this year we're gonna have a little poster and invite people to join the club cool I mean, we're getting people from Ludington from uh, Brownstone <laughs> so Higgins Lake and if we pick up a couple members that'd be great we need a table for Larry, W8BR, he's our ARRL section manager, and I think we can put the card checker with him. The card checker has confirmed that he's going to be there. Sweet. Setup is 5 p.m. Friday. We usually show up at 4, and then we wait while the middle school <coughs> track team finishes their practice, and we sit on our hands. So 5 o'clock, give me a show of hands of who thinks they might be able to make it. What day of the week is it on, then? 
Uh, this is a Friday, Friday night. Friday evening? Yep, yeah, I'll do it. Many hands make light work. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, no, I can't. Tom, can you get us some vo volunteers from Manton? Like uh, you did last uh, year? Uh, you want, you want uh, is the... Uh, the setup would be the most important one, setup, Friday night. Okay. Right. Friday at 5. If you could get that, would help. Don, are you the one that numbers the tables? Where are you, Don? You number the tables and, yeah. and assign them? Okay. You bring the tape and the markers? I bring the tape and the markers. Somebody else fills them mark, because otherwise you wouldn't know what I'm Okay. Saying. All right. <laughs> Sign up inside, or signs inside. I've got that one covered. UP net testing at 10 o'clock. Testing at 10 o'clock. UP net is, I don't know what time. Okay. Because usually those two adjacent rooms done that right hallway. Okay, direction signs for Friday night. We put them out. Last year, Lee and Tom did it. Tom's not going to be available. Do you want to do it? Sure. Okay. Uh, do we have a sign directing table renters to the back door? Wait, no, we don't. So when are we putting those out? Friday Friday night or, set, or early Saturday morning. Yeah, that'll be... Which I mean, then, if you then, want to get up early, right. I'm, I'm hauling the, uh, but that'll be it before that. Yeah. Yeah, we can put I can put up the signs after, uh, after. After our set up, because people would come in the night before, they kind of look for those. Oh, right. I need a volunteer who will make a couple of signs that says, "Vendors back door, regulars front door." Who's good at painting? Who's good at it? Come on, I'm not. But we gotta have we gotta have a sign because what happens? Brady said I can do the signs. They they come up to the front door with their trailer full of stuff. Yeah. And you don't need to do that. Okay. Hey, Brady, can I get something? Here? Sure. The um, the original idea that I had when I got this from my wife was, you know, those big stone signs that are out there. Mm -hmm. They've got them where it says administration and all. Mm -hmm. Use those and just take a, 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 some um, rope, mm -hmm. hook them on, hook them around there. It'll, it'll stay on there. And you have one big sign that says okay. vendors, the other mm -hmm. one general admission, and okay. that should do it. Okay. I might be able to help you with that. Okay. I, honestly, I might uh, tell my husband that if he's sitting at home and has a big black marker that. <laughs> <laughs> Very good at volunteering his time. Tom, you're going to test the PA system Friday night. I want you to make sure everything works. Uh, Tom, door prize is set up Friday. You're going to bring all the stuff in Friday night? Yeah, I can. Well, I mean, it's up to you. Yeah, sure. I can bring it in Friday night. Okay, car checker is confirmed. Tickets and wristbands, we've got them. I need two carts or wagons. I do it for you, but We've got the uh, National Honor Society kids are going to help. Yeah, Every year those old men are more willing to let little girls help them unload their stuff. The first year, no man was going to let a little girl help them. <coughs> then all of a sudden they're starting to do it. Okay. We need two wagons or carts. My usual. Okay, we've got one. I got another cart. You can borrow mine again. Okay, great. Cash box and change to brandy. I've got. The, I can get the cash box and I will bring it. I will figure out how to get there Friday night to pick that stuff up. And Lee, do you get the money? How do we? We need to have yeah. some change in there, right? Yep. You nice. two going to work on that? Yeah. I, I collect it so that it's in, in my possession overnight, and I bring it on the morning. Got it. Back door opens at uh, six. I'll be doing that. Call members to manage the back door. Don, is that where you stay? <laughs> you need some help? Randy, um, you want the money? Somebody to back up just in case. Friday night, right? Yep. Is there somebody who would be willing to be at the Friday back door to help check the people in that are buying boxes. tables? Um, Lynn does. I pick it up from him. I'll pick it up from Anybody? him on Friday. I'm not that hard to do with this. So we'll, okay. we'll make the final time. Uh, National Honor Society, they are going to be there at 6 30. Talk in. I already talked to Bob. He's going to be at 6 30. Uh, oh, what denominations? Yeah. I'll, I'll figure that out. For okay. what we I know it's $400. Mm -hmm. well. We need it. Oh, I'll, I'll bring I'll, it. I'll figure it out. No, they no, always tell us to bring an extra game. 9 volt battery because I guess the microphone is not used that much and it runs out of power. We don't want that. Yeah, power. we were scrambling last year looking for batteries. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Manton concessions are going to be there at 8 o'clock. 
They will have uh, coffee and donuts from 8 until about 10, and then they're going to switch over. And we're putting them in the gym this year, so they don't have to go to the cafeteria. Is that the same ones that was there last year? Yes. Cool. Yep. And I already checked with Michelle. She's all set. Uh, I'd like as many people to wear our vests. I'll have that big box over by our club table. If you're a member and you're there, put it on. Uh, you're kind of an ambassador for the club. Somebody has questions, they're going to go to you. And you have all the answers. So uh, wear, wear the colors proudly. I need at least one uh, helper for Brandy at the entrance. Van, you usually do that, right? I usually. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, um, one of the things that we talked about at the end of last swap that I am doing too is I'm uh, going to have a, uh, I think it'd be easiest to use a peg board that I have at work. I'm going to put a map on it and have people, when they come in, put a pin to say so we have a visual of how far away people are coming from. Did you hear that? It's a great idea. We're going to have a map at the front where they come in, and we're going to put little pins to see how far they come from and where they come from. You might be able to use one of those. Maybe. I've got, I actually have a big um, cork board at, okay. that I figured it's in the back of our, uh, our room at work. I can borrow it. Honestly, it's harder to find a map at this point in time. I've got two. Yeah. I, 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 this last weekend I got offered them, but they were all like antique, and I don't want to st stick pins in antique no, I've maps. Got maps. <laughs> Who draws the tickets? Is that you? Uh, no. Be whoever was at the club table with the, they would come and get the, the um, come and draw tickets out of the tub and hand them up and take them back. Tom, can you do that? Yeah. I think that's what you did last year. Yeah, that's what I did last year. Okay, uh, I guess this would be you, Don, checking prepaid vendors, table renters. You're all set. Process yeah. for those wanting to rent tables the day of swap. Do you need to have change there? We, took, we did that. You've got it all set. Yep. Good. I gave him some at the Tom, you're going to announce? Yeah, yeah because John, about so, so, some people don't pay for their tickets okay. ahead of time. Make sure you <laughs> throw, uh, promote no, testing I, I gave them and a, the UP net. A UP net this year is starting at 10. Noted and some of the, the pin money. And, and then he gave it back. And the bracelets. But those band symbols will earn their money. Lee, are you going to then take the signs down after the swap? Yeah. And we need volunteers to take down tables and chairs again. The more we have, the quicker it gets done. Yeah. All interior, I'll take care of those. PA system, Tom, you got to make sure it's turned off. Shut the mic off, put it back. Uh, I'll take the wristbands and tickets to storage and begin my process of taking about 300 tickets and trying to read email addresses that are about this big. <laughs> it takes me almost a year. But that's how we promote the club. Uh, unclaimed door prizes. If we have any, my suggestion, we keep them. Yeah. And the next meeting, we include it as part of the 50-50 raffle. You can't keep them until the next year. Well, that are good stuff. We want to get in on it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, one of those prizes that I got, I was uh, completely blown away at the team from MFJ. It was a 30-meter double, it was a 30-meter um, ladder line was built out of ladder line antenna those things ain't cheap well then don't put it out uh, i could probably use that <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> well, well you know it's field it's day you all, we, we, we all right uh i just want to make sure the cash box and i guess you two have done enough you know how to Wait, yeah and my big thing is is making sure that i have somebody to hand it over, hand the cash over to after i've done the counting okay so. That, I, think you, I think you gave it to me last I time. think I gave it. I just need to make sure that I can find somebody at the end of the day. I clear the venue with the custodian, and I can't get out of there until Roger leaves. Roger will not let anybody help him. You last year I got out of there at 4 o'clock. Yeah, I just made sure. Uh, I'll take care of the keys. Did we miss anything? That's the most important. Um, making sure that the overhead goes into multiple rooms, that we flip the right switches so that we can hear it in the entryway and in... Um, testing because I think that was something last year. What's that? They overhead that we turn on the the overhead in the correct rooms that the people that were taking the test oh, couldn't yeah. hear the they announcements. Don't know how to do it, and they didn't know how to do it last year. So mm -hmm. that's I I emailed a bunch of things to Matt, the principal, and that's one mm -hmm. of the things I said if we could possibly get audio into the two classrooms. Uh, the complaint was, especially from the UP net, 
you know, you announced my name, but I didn't hear it, so I missed out on a prize. And that's a, a legitimate. So. I'd rather testing didn't get disturbed with right. the PA okay. system. Would you rather not have it? I'd rather not have okay, it. Okay, we'll just do but it for make the a list. Make a list of the people who are there and give to the announcer. Yeah, that's Okay, good. That's why we get together like this. So you're the VP. I just know that in past years I've heard that complaint that I can't hear it in the hallway. And Okay, let's take a five-minute break, and then we're going to begin our program, which is about uh, QSO, QSL. Move in the dark, All right, grab a seat. Grab a seat. Come on, grab a seat. I got to get home to watch the Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> Yeah, we know none of your teams went out of bracket. So. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Had to rub that in, right? All right. I don't think anybody's teams went on the bracket. Yeah. All right, we're program tonight is on confirming your QSOs. And so the question is, of course, why would you ever want to do that? Uh, there's really only a couple reasons. One is if you want to get any of the ARRL awards, worked all states work all continents, DXCC, etc. they require that you prove that you actually talk to China. You can't just say, hey, I work in China. You can't just show them your logbook. You have to prove it. Does, yeah. does QRZ prove it? No. Not for the ARL. No. That's why we're doing this tonight. So, and the other reason is, if you're like me, I like, I like getting cards. I just like doing it. I like collecting them. Uh, it's kind of fun. But otherwise, you know, you really don't need to do this. So, how do you do it? Well, we're going to talk about uh, three ways that you can do it. I'm going to talk a little bit about paper cards. And you can see some over here on the coffee table, a couple of nice albums that uh, Tim brought. Uh, we're also going to talk about electronic QSL or EQSL, and then logbook of the world. If you do paper QSL cards, I'll just give you a few samples. If you work a de-expedition in Africa, they're going to send you wild animals. They just always do. Sometimes there's a special event. This uh, yeah. Hungarian Amateur Radio Association celebrated the 225th birthday Aww. of Samuel Morse for the Morse Code. Yeah. So special events are reasons for cards. Sometimes they like to show off some of their geographical features and just throw in a pretty girl with flowers in her hair. Why not? This is a YL I worked and she was very proud of her son. Some of them put family members on their cards. And then here's the information that the ARRL wants when uh, we have our swap. The card checker is there. He's going to look. Uh, my own mouse isn't showing up there. He's going to look here uh, at uh, March 3rd, uh, 2016. I worked this station on 15 meters CW. What was neat about this card is they put all their QSOs uh, that they worked during that de expedition. And just so I'd like to point out the ratio look at that ratio between CW and sideband and digital. 20,000 CW. Well, part of that is because CW is faster. It really is, you know. Slam, bam, Yep. Uh, some people make their own cards. This guy is very proud of the fact that he is a music teacher and a radio amateur because he tells you on his card, I am a music teacher and radio amateur too. Pardon me. And he's and, uh, <laughs> and some of them try to be funny with their homemade cards. This guy's got his family gagged and bound because he's got a new one on the hook. He says, shh, quiet. So, and then I just wanted to show you, uh, this was the design of my first card. Back in the day, you had about eight choices. You didn't do custom designs. And I thought this looked cool. And you had to fill out a little tiny form with your call letters and your name and send about three dollars in and mine came back WN8UPD. 
D as in Delta. So I, for about the next five cards, I used a uh, felt pen, and then I, it just looked so terrible. I just I gave up. So, for you, how do you exchange cards? Well, if you go to QRZ and look up a station that you talk to, they will give you instructions as to maybe where how they will do it. It's either direct, send it direct to this station, or go through a QSL manager. A lot of these guys work so many that they don't want to bother with the taking care of the cards. So they hire someone to do, do it for them. And it's a courtesy in the US to use an SASE, self-addressed stamped envelope. Uh, overseas, they ask for green stamps, two or three dollars, okay? No. Well, sometimes it's more. I had a guy from Hong Kong who wanted 20 bucks. Well, I would, <laughs> no, I would, I would never pay 20 bucks for Hong Kong, but Tom, I know you've paid 20 bucks. The most I've ever paid is $10. Yeah, I just uh, pitched in money for, uh, for the expedition. You, 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 yeah, and there were a bunch of Russians, and you thought they wouldn't spend it on bucks, vodka. I did get the car. Okay. Uh, there's a QSL, our QSL bureau for members. It's slow. But it's inexpensive. I thought they were phasing that out. They haven't yet. I just got an envelope of cards. I got one four months ago. They said this is the last time you're going to get them. Are they sure they didn't say this is the last time you're going to get them until you pay more? Because I got a note that says uh, we need more money. We need more money in your. You send about five dollars, and when they get maybe fifteen or twenty cards, they put them in an envelope and send them to you. And it's a lot cheaper doing it that way. But it's really slow. You're lucky to get two envelopes a year, depending on how many DX stations you work. Uh, but it's kind of neat. You're not expecting it. You get this envelope full of cards. And then the other way is uh, Club Log or OQRS. Uh, if you Google Club Log, it will show up and you can go to Log Search, type your call letters in, type the call letter of the station you worked, hit submit and it'll tell you if you actually got confirmed. You click again and it sends you to a site where you can order the card. You don't have to send your card to them. That's probably the most frequently used, at least for me. Where do you get cards? There are specialty printers, uh, Google QSL card. One of the best ones that come up is Gigaparts and they're one of the best prices. It's about $25 per hundred of standard designs, a little more if it's a uh, custom design that you do. Uh, some people have used local printers. Uh, who used the local? Uh, Ken's not here. I think Ken used the local printer. Yeah, yeah I used the same one. Yeah. Cadillac printing. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, and then you can make your own card. And Les is going to come up and show us how he does his. Before we do that, Back in the day, you could send anything as a QSL card. I'll pass this around. This is a station in California that made his cards out of wood. <laughs> and there's a six cent wow. stamp on the back. Awesome. Uh, this, this went to my dad. My dad was a ham. I'll pass this around. It's kind of unique. Les, come on up and we'll get you hooked up. While we're doing this, we're talking about the Bureau. My call sign's a vanity call sign, obviously. And uh, about two months ago, in the mail, I got a package of QSL cards from the Voice of America Bureau. And I thought, well, that's cool. And I started looking through all that, and they were from Japan and everywhere. And uh, I was all excited, and then I got to look at the date. And uh, my vanity call sign was from a silent key, oh. and all those cards were his. Oh. And one of, one of them, I checked, and the guy that sent it, had, he had been dead for eight years, so the bureaus are slow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, I forgot to bring my mouse up. I'm sorry. Delay in action here. 
But anyway, that's uh, that's one hazard of a vanity call sign that I haven't uh, had oh. expected. I think you just don't know. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I want you. Uh, if Bob was here, he'd tell you I'm cheap, <laughs> and so I make my own QSL cards, and uh, right here you can see Radio QTH QSL cards. That's the program that I start with. And this, this is all free, there's no charge for it. Uh, and uh, what you do, you fill all this in here. I'll just go ahead. And my mouse is sliding down, I'm afraid that it. <laughs> Address location, you can specify where it's printed in the center of the card, the left or the right. And what I did on mine, I'll put it on the left. I'm going to tell it four cards per page. Because again, I'm cheap. Can you buy card stock that's already appropriated and everything for that? You can. I, yeah, unless uh, you're cheap. <laughs> yeah, I just use regular hard card stock. Uh, Let's see. Well, well, we'll just go ahead. I mean, some of this other stuff you'd want to maybe fill out. So, come on. Is it something? There. Did it go up here? Either way. Oh, all right. There we go. Okay. So, you could could use that, you know, it's pretty plain. And like what I was talking about, if, if I had selected center, it would put this there, or you put it on the left. But I put it over to the side, and then what I do, if you hit control, and where's the print screen on this computer? A whole new moment. Top left. Okay, and so then I walk away from that program, and then I use PC Paint. <coughs> and uh, well, come on. it's not going to let me paste it. Control C, Control V, Control V. Still didn't like. And it didn't print it, didn't it do the screen? It didn't, you know. Maybe I thought about it too long. All right. <coughs> I'll try it again. Randy can probably tell you all how to do this. That it is cool. No, it's not going to let me do it. But anyway, uh, uh, I paste it in into paint. Once I get it in paint, I'll show you here. Okay, this uh, this wizard graphic. That's cool. I uh, picked that <coughs> off the internet. In just a little bit of history. Uh, in 1976, I managed a CB radio store, and it was called Nebraska Wireless, and my handle was the Wireless Wizard. So I, I used that same graphic for that. But anyway, there's my card. I just All right. Use the paint to yeah. paint it, paste it in there. Nice. The only trouble is uh, I don't have the rights for the wizard. We won't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I may be calling for. Uh, Bail money? Bail money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that as long as there's no pecuniary interest in it, that you can get away with it. Yeah. I, What's that? Money. money. So. Sorry I couldn't taste it there, but that's the basic thing. that us. Thank you. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I've got a suggestion. <laughs>
you might want to add to your card. Grid square and county. I've got it on, oh. on my actual card. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, one other comment on the, on the bureau. Uh, if you if you'll get if you leave an envelope down there, uh, say it's just one stamp, it takes you a while to get stuff back. You'll find you get shortwave listener cards. It's the only way that they can get QSO cards. Some countries make it mandatory that you're you are a shortwave listener, and you have to collect so many uh, confirmation cards before you can get into ham radio. Wow. And uh, the only way they can do that is through the bureau. Uh, I've collected a number of shortwave listener cards coming through. Uh, now they can do it. You'll see them show up on uh, EQSL. In fact, uh, I uh, disregarded a couple of cards. I didn't know what they were. I looked at them and said, this is, this is not, I didn't work this guy. And then I got to thinking about it, looking at it, and I had to go back and redo it because yeah, I'm sure we listen to it. You'll see those coming in EQSL also. Okay, Steve, log book of the world. I'm going to use this because of the base off. Come on up. I don't know where it's at. It's on the base log. Here, look like I'm working for you. Okay. Um, sorry, my voice is shot. Um, I lectured for three hours today, so. We'll try to get through this. Uh, thanks for the invitation. And I want to show you what I do for logging. So we went from uh, no tech to now high tech. So just to, show, just to show our hands, how many of you use logging software? Yeah, like QRZ. QRZ accounts, yeah. yeah. OK, so a fair number of you do. So here's what I use. Um, I use Logbook of the World, N3FJP, WSJTX, and then I do have QRZ and N1MM. QRZ is, is the least favorite that I have. I just have it as a courtesy. So it depends, the key here is what is in the yellow. So it depends what I'm doing, uh, which program I use, okay? And these are all interfaced together. And once they're interfaced, it's, it's like less time I have to do with paper logging. So if I'm just talking to somebody around here, I'll just use N3FJP. That is that is my golden copy. So you have to decide what's going to be your primary logging program. And I've made a decision. Mine is N3FJP. And that's there's probably a hundred out there, but this is my fave. And a lot of hams use it. If I am contesting, all right, I'm going to go to N1MM. That's a much better contesting uh, software package. All right, you can download the template, the exchanges are set up. So if, if I'm doing any kind of contest work, I'm here. If I'm using FT8, which, how many of you use FT8? Okay, I use WSJTX, how many of you use that? Okay, so JTX keeps its own log, all right? But where it's at in its own log does me no good because now I have to transfer all this stuff. All right, and QRZ is the same way. It's very isolated. So how this works in practice is I have a 7300, doesn't matter what rig you have. I have software loaded onto the computer. And then um, what I do is I use N3FJP as my primary logger. So I make a contact with you, boom, put it in there. And what's going on behind the scenes right now is it's logging it into my golden copy of the database. And what I do is if I want it in QRZ, all I do is go and download from N3FJP into QRZ. All right, and that's on the cloud. And anybody can access that. Yes? Do you have to do that like every day? Well, I don't. Um, some people do it like once a year, which is kind of painful. But I do it like every week. So, you know, it, it varies. So that's kind of my normal flow of the day. All right, now let's say I got to get it to Logbook of the World. So Logbook of the World is used by a lot of hams, all right? It's um, very popular. It takes a little time to set it up. Oh, yeah. But once it's set up, it works great. A lot of hams will not confirm with you, you know, if you're not on Logbook of the World. And it's all about the, the confirmation, as uh, Lynn mentioned. So how I, how I do this is I don't key stuff into Logbook of the World. 
I, it's all automated. So I don't go out, go in and log in. There's really no need to. And so everything, again, goes through N3FJP. So when I'm in N3FJP, all I have to do is create another download into Logbook of the World. So this all is going on all behind the scenes, all right? So it all ends up in there. TQSL is just your digital signature. You know, it's, all it's doing is verifying that you're who you say you are, and then that goes into the cloud. All right, so everything is still synced up with my golden copy, and it works the same way with N1MM. I have my, this keeps its own log by itself. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't do me any good. So I have to get this back up into N3FJP. Uh, so that is all interface. The last part of this is if you're using WSJTX, um, you know that it keeps its own log. If you've looked at it, it's a text file or an ADIF file. It's not real usable. And we don't want to rekey all that stuff. So it's interfaced through something called JT Alert into N3FJPs. Yeah. It's Gordon. an easier way. There might be, but. N3FPJ has an API specifically for WSJTX now. Yeah, I like to, I like to use JT Alert, but yeah, you can, yeah. And um, that's a good point. So. It, it looks complicated, it's not that bad, but but as you get more experience, you might, yes? Your folded copy, is, is that like a drive you need? It's just a, a <laughs> file on my hard drive. Okay. It's just because I don't want five copies of data because they will all be out of sync. They will never be in sync. And if you're doing manual entries, you're going to be off. Um, so I just want to make sure that I have a copy that I know I can trust. So every time you use the N3, it makes a copy? Every time I make a contact, I type in your call, it goes out to QRZ, gets information, gets your name, yeah. everything that you have in QRZ, mm -hmm. pops it in there automatically. I even have signal strength defaulted to 5.9. That goes, in that golden copy? Goes, into the, it goes into a file on my hard drive. So you can't, you're not looking at it while you're doing a so. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the screen, which tells me who you are, and then when I and when it's logged, it just goes into the database. So it's just a place to put stuff. Is there some magic to getting logbook to work? I have tried <laughs> hour after hour after. A logbook of the world is not a logbook, folks. It's a database. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Well, it's called logbook of the world. I know it, but it's not a logbook. You have to use okay, entry FPGA or make it work. Okay, let's what, keep going. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it, if you need help, I can help you with it. It takes time to, to get it set up, but once it gets working, it's working. But yeah, the, the, it's just a place to put your stuff is all it is. You're not going to go out here routinely and make a contact and go here and enter it in. It's just not very friendly. So um, let me stop. See if you have any questions. It looks complicated, but again, I have different needs. You know, I'm on FTA and I'm, I'm contesting and I'm just doing normal stuff. And depending on what I'm doing, it dictates what I use. But it's all interfaced. I don't do anything. Does it, so N, N3FJP as a listener that, that uh, goes out automatically to those other spots? Or do you have to manually say, hey, go look at this? Do you have a button you push to go look at the, the N1MM? I just, it's an icon, I just double click on it, fires up the software, gives me a screen, and it just runs in the background. Okay. And JT Alert I have set up because I use that to, to um, like if I need a state or something, I'll just set that up to alert me so it pops up and I go, oh, okay, so and so's on. Tim, why don't you come up? Let's hold questions. We're running past our time. You can come up afterwards and talk to the experts and they'll help you out. Um, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Tim, you need to use the... No. Oh, okay. He doesn't mind. That, that N3FPJ, how much did you say that cost? 29 bucks. That's a lifetime. Is this uh, Steve's flash drive? Yeah. Do, is this yours? Yeah. Do you want it? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's actually Dr. S. Sears. <laughs> yeah, well, let me see if this will work.
From QRZ Logbook to EQSL. All I run my is this is FT8. Every time I get a blue line, they're calling me anyway. When I get down to uh, TX5 and I get a log, I go from here into uh, uh, QRZ and I uh, enter my log, which takes like 30 seconds. This is going to move on. There. And here's QRZ. Here's where I manually put, the, put this stuff in. And over here, where these boxes are, you can check them off. But I don't get action, you can tell it, you can look, ask for confirmation. Well, where all the magic happens for me is in Grid Tracker. You got to set it up for, you go into settings, and you have to uh, enter in your information for uh, QRZ. Yep, QRZ, and then uh, EQSL, and Logbook of the World. I got all three of those in there. And it all, then it all takes care of itself. I mean, when you hit the TX5 and make a log, it, it takes care of it for you. You don't log nothing. And this, this is why you put it in the QRZ, because as soon as you click on someone's call sign, it'll come up and tell you who they are, where they're at. And this is a, a problem I, I came up with, is uh, um, you couldn't go from EQSL to Logbook of the World without paying like 35 bucks a year or something like that. It was, it was like that. Mm. But in the Grid Tracker, you know, it shows my location. And then uh, the next one will show you. There's everything that goes on in Grid Tracker with people calling other people. Anytime you transmit, see this red line? That's I'm transmitting to this guy over here. Then he transmits back. The line will go both directions. And there's everything uh, on uh, a PSK reporter that was reading my station. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, logbook of the world deal. We're getting QSOs from QRZ into the logbook of the world. So even though mine is automatically logging into the logbook of the world, I never see it. I never see anything from it. I get all my uh, my QSL cards from EQSL. Once you log in, you're going to see a bunch of icons come up. And then when you see a green box, you've got EQSL cards in your inbox. You click on that, and it'll take you to a search. You just click on the search, and then it'll just pop up all the cards that were sent to you. And that was one from. So that's an example of a card that you get. Yep. So that's an e card. Yep. Then I just uh, I save it on my computer and I also print it. The end. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. <laughs> and now he's just showing off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. We've gone a little long, but I think it was worth it. What I suggest we do is uh, we're, we've got to hand out some money here. So we'll do the drawing and then we'll adjourn and our experts will stick around. If you have any questions, uh, deal with them that way. My humble card is just done like this and I've, there's extra room so I put what I call eyeball QSL cards that you hand out at swaps. Uh, easy to do. We had a lot of good suggestions. Uh, let's do the uh, drawing. Leah? Last three digits are one, one, zero. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> oh, you didn't even have to look, Scott. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Take the source over here. Yeah. <laughs> totally okay, I'd one. like to hey, thank everybody that helped out. If you have any questions, stick around and ask. It sounds complicated, but it isn't really that complicated. We are officially adjourned. But, the end. Uh, there's some Meeting cards adjourned. over here if you want to look at them. And thanks for coming. Thank you for your time and attention.